All right, hey guys. So this is kind of part two of my Tennessee video. Part one was all about why we moved from California to Tennessee. This is part two, kind of answering all your questions. Um, the majority of these questions were asked in the Facebook group, Move from California to Tennessee. If you guys aren't a part of that, I highly suggest joining. There's also another group called Leaving California. Really good group, lots of helpful information. But yeah, let's just jump right into the questions. Um, if you guys see me looking off to the side, it's because I am reading the questions off my computer. I'm gonna try and do this in sections as best I can, but let's just jump right into the first one. I know what's on a lot of people's minds when they first move here is the bugs and the humidity, and I get it. There are a lot of bugs here. I'm talking like Jumanji size bug. <laughs> That's what it feels like sometimes. Um, it's just, it's unavoidable. One way that you can keep the bugs down is if you spray your yard. So we spray our yard every year in the spring and then that'll last you through the, to the fall and then you do it again the following spring. It's not that expensive. Um, it really helps keep the mosquitoes down. You can spray for mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks. Um, we never see ticks on our dog. So it works, it, it really has worked for us. Also mowing your grass, keeping your grass short, that will keep bugs away. We really didn't notice them till probably the very end of summer when it's the most humid. Brings me to the next point and that is humidity. I know that's another big one. Um, it is humid here. I personally don't think it's unbearable. I think the time where we stay inside are probably the last two weeks of August, right before it starts to turn cold. It's no more unbearable than it would be like in Calif like a California summer. In my opinion and so with that kind of brings us to weather people asked about like the snow and the rain it doesn't really snow here unless you are in the knoxville area closer to the mountains um but we're near nashville just so you guys can have um a reference point we're near nashville and last year it snowed once it's where the snow actually stayed for the entire day and everything shut down because they are not used to snow here um, but the year before that, it snowed for maybe 30 minutes and then it went away and didn't snow again. So it doesn't really snow here. You don't have to be concerned about like driving in it. Um, it does rain here a lot. And I wouldn't say, I the drivers are bad here. I joke with my husband that they just like hand out licenses just for showing up. Um, but the drivers are bad here. I would say they are no worse in the rain than they normally are. They're just bad. But it does rain a lot here. That's why it's so green. That's why it's so pretty. One of my biggest reasons for wanting to stay in Tennessee is the Four Seasons. I mean, the Four Seasons are just unbelievable. I wish I could show you, maybe I can put a clip in here of my yard right now, but all the leaves are turning, it's fall, it's so beautiful. I love having all Four Seasons. Um, I do wish it snowed a little bit more, like I will take a week, maybe even a month, but tops. Um, but I do wish it snowed a little bit more but it is just so beautiful here. And I will talk about, I will talk more about raining and flooding in the housing section when I talk about like how you should pick a house. But next let's talk about safety. So the safest areas, I'm gonna put a map up of the safest areas in Tennessee. Um, and now I want you guys to keep in mind that it, the crime here is reported a little bit different than it would be in California. Here they report everything. Just one example, we heard about this um, woman who owned a restaurant you know, um, a homeless person came, kept coming in and they would stay in there for a couple hours. So she decided to lock it and you could only use it if you had the keys, which you had to ask for. And so the woman got angry and started like badgering her and they called the police and the police couldn't do anything. They didn't file a report um, because they said we can't do anything unless they physically attack you, which is unfortunate. But something like that would not get reported in California where here it would get reported, they would get removed. Um, so yeah, so crime is just reported a little bit differently. Generally, it is safer. I would highly suggest staying away from Memphis. Um, I have heard horror stories about Memphis. I know that there's people that work in Memphis and live outside the city. It's really any big city, you're gonna get more crime, like Nashville. Same thing, you're gonna get more crime, but it is going to be lower than California. But if you compare the probably the worst cities in California to the worst cities here, um, I think you're still gonna get higher crime in California. I could be wrong about that. Um, which brings us to the next one and that is the best school zones. I'm gonna throw a list up here of the best school zones. The schools are really great here. Even your bad schools are gonna be a lot better than your bad schools in California. Um, I know we had friends who moved here from California and they went to a school that people considered ghetto. And they, they said, what are you talking about? This is a really nice school compared to the one my kids went to. Um, and you can look at all that when you're buying a house 
it'll tell you um, what school you're zoned for and then you can actually go on Facebook and ask about it like if you join a local Facebook group to that city which I would highly suggest if you're looking to move into a specific area is join a Facebook group specific to that city and you can ask all of those questions. Another question that I got asked about was flood zones and so I am going to throw this graphic up here and th these are the top flood zones in Tennessee. Because it does rain here so much, you are more prone to flooding. So you want to be very careful again in picking a house and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, where you pick your house, look for the flood zones, look for the specific areas. Well, let's just jump into the housing and is the housing cheaper here? Yes, it is. But you have to try and buy a house that is the same as something that you would have in California. So for example, if you have say a $600,000 house in California, it would maybe cost $200,000 here. But if you are wanting to spend the same amount of money that you do in Calif that you did in California, you had a $600,000 house in California and so you want to buy a $600,000 house here, yes, you're going to get a mansion, but you're also going to get the same mortgage that you would in California. Therefore, you're going to have to make a around as much as you did in California in order to maintain this house. So I think that's the biggest mistake that people make is they try and make a unilateral move financially instead of house housewise. Now, if you are looking to move and you can afford to buy something bigger, you want more property. If you are looking to buy acres, buy a smaller house with more acres that is that will bring down your cost. And it, it's also going to depend on what city you're looking for. The If you are moving closer to Nashville or if you're wanting to live in Nashville, the houses are going to be more expensive than if you live 30 to 40 minutes from Nashville. So those are all things to take into consideration. There's this app called Real Tracks and it has all the houses that are for sale in Tennessee. Um, and that app is the most up to date. It's going to have uh, the most current houses because a lot of times when you look on Realtor or you look on Zillow, those houses are already taken and so you're wasting your time looking at houses that because houses go so fast here, you're wasting your time looking at houses that are probably already have 10 offers on them. So real tracks, I highly suggest you download that app along with buying a house. As far as flooding, what I suggest is if you can look at a property when it's raining so you can see where the water pools, I would suggest that you do that. Now, if you can, Tennessee has a lot of hills. So when you are looking at a property, you wanna look at the terrain, you wanna see where you are relative to the rest of the neighborhood. So say your neighborhood, your neighborhood has a lot of hills, are you towards the top of the hill or are you towards the bottom? Because if you're towards the bottom, water is more likely to pull there. Um, same thing, like we used to live, our old house was, our old house was on a hill and the house right across the street from us was at the bottom. So their backyard was completely flooded when it rained. So our neighbors sold their house and the people who bought the house after them they didn't know that their their backyard flooded so it was pretty much unusable when it rained they had a ton of mosquitoes the rain went away it was still muddy you couldn't really grow things back there so those are all, those are things that you want to take into consideration when looking for a house all right so food this is this is one of the big ones what is it that you really like to do eat wish in and out with a franchise come on in and out come to tennessee um, in and out is what I miss the most, honestly. But yes, the food here is different. Um, not as healthy as you're going to get in California. Not a lot of healthy options. Um, the fast food restaurants are just not as good. I mean, it's California. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something that you're going to have to adjust to. The food is not as good. What they're known for here is barbecue and hot chicken. Hot chicken is the big thing in Tennessee. Um, if you guys are in the Nashville, Nashville, blah, 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 Nashville area, I suggest going to Martin's, um, for barbecue. Hattie B's is a really popular one for hot chicken. However, there is a local place here called J's, JP's Hot Chicken, which I think is technically in Kentucky, but it is so good. Better in my opinion than Hattie B's, which is like a franchise. Um, if you are in Memphis, which Memphis has the best barbecue, if you're willing to risk getting shot for the barbecue. I mean, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do for food. But uh, Central Barbecue in Memphis is really good. Uh, then you have Hickory Pit in Chattanooga, Peg Leg in Nashville. Um, those are all really good places. 
again the barbecue is gonna be better here so that's a plus but just your everyday common fast food it's not as good you still have normal things like you know mcdonald's burger king but you're not gonna have like there's no del taco here which makes me sad um pollo loco there's none of that in and out which i already cried about but even just like more healthy healthy options like you don't have things like poke bowls like that that you um that are fast but a little bit healthier options you're you're not gonna really it's gonna be harder to find the next one is culture shock was there a culture shock when we moved here yes in a good way um i kind of talked about this in my first video that people are so friendly here your neighbors are really friendly um people are really neighborhood driven here so there is a facebook Facebook group page for almost every neighborhood in our city. Um, that's a really big thing. So all the neighborhoods have names. That seems to be a Tennessee thing. Um, and so if you figure out the name of your neighborhood, you can probably find a Facebook page to it. And you people have block parties. Halloween is a big thing here. Our old neighborhood was super into Halloween. So people would, there were houses that did hot dogs and houses that, that did s'mores and passed out toy to go around we would take the kids around the neighborhood and talk to everyone so yes it people are more neighborhood neighborhood driven there wasn't too much of a culture shock which kind of brings me to the next one people asked if there is racism here and it's like such a weird one to talk about um i would say no more than any other place no more than california honestly i think in california um race was a bigger issue than it is here you are predominantly going to get white and black here um every once in a while i'll see someone who's Hispanic who speaks Spanish. It's just not as common as it was in California. But as far as uh, discrimination or racism, I have not experienced it. I have not seen it. I am sure it happens just like anywhere else. But I think generally if you are respectful, if you're polite, then people will welcome you and they will they will welcome you in. Um, all our neighbors really like us. You know, we I just will walk over to my neighbor's house. I don't even have to knock. Sometimes I'll just go in there. I have a key to my neighbor's house. My son picks up their mail every day. Um, it's just, it's really different than it was in California. But people are just really friendly. They're really open. If you're polite, if you're nice, they, I think they will welcome you in. The next one is ideas for making friends, especially for retired people. Um, I would highly, I would highly suggest, like I said, joining your neighborhood page and talking to other people. Um, organizing block parties. Block parties are a big thing here. So if you organize it, I think people will do it. Um, and another one is figuring out what you're really into. So if you're retired and you're really into crocheting, then starting a Facebook group um, specific to that, or there might already be one. So for example, like we're into homesteading. I looked up homesteaders specific to my city and I found a group for that. Or we're into homeschooling. Um, I looked up a homeschool group specific to my city and I talked to other homeschooling moms. So just depending on what you're into, like uh, look into that. Get plugged into a church if you're a Christian. Um, that was a huge one for us. Even striking up a conversation with someone at a, like, if you're into crafts, go to a craft store and strike up a conversation. They're not in a hurry here like they are in California, which does take adjustment because you might want things quicker. Um, I think we were in the drive-thru the other day for 20 minutes and I was really frustrated. But then I remembered, like, I'm not in California. Things are not as fast as they were there. Um, but so it's, so if you're in a hurry, that might be bad. But if you're wanting to strike up a conversation, I've had conversations with cashiers for five minutes where we just talk, we get to know each other. People are so friendly here. I think if you just strike up a conversation anywhere, you're very likely to make friends. Somebody asked, what are the things you wish you would have known before you moved here? Um, and there's really not a whole lot. I think one of the big ones, one of the big ones my husband said is that buying a house is cheaper here. It's just doable. Um, we honestly weren't sure if we would ever be able to afford a house. Our mortgage is actually cheaper than our rent was at our old house. It's actually really affordable to buy a house here. Like I mentioned before, it's just being realistic about the kind of house you want. Um, and the other thing my husband mentioned was that you just don't need as much money as you would in California. If, as long as you don't buy something bigger than you had in California, because I think, especially with inflation. Let's go, Brandon! The difference is not huge. Food is slightly cheaper. Um, gas is cheaper. Registration. But I don't think a big enough difference that you can pay the same amount for, for a mortgage than you did in California and take a price cut in your job. So I would take that into consideration if you are looking for a house. Someone else asked about the mask mandates. So there are no mask mandates here. You don't have to wear a mask. Um, nobody wears a mask. 
The only place that we are asked to wear a mask is to the doctors. Um, I don't even wear one to the dentist. I actually don't even own any masks. If I go to the doctors, they usually have one for me. Just recently passed something saying that kids are no longer required to make to wear a mask in school. So it would be up to the parents whether or not they want to they want them to wear a mask. It's just it's not something that we really talk about here. Um, I do know that some jobs, especially in the healthcare field, um, do require vaccines. Do require vaccines. Um, but I also know that they are more likely to take um, religious exemptions here than they are in California. But yeah, other than that, it's it's just really different from California. Like the stories that I hear about what's going on over there, it almost feels like you're living in a different country. Okay, and the last one is things to do here. So there, um, there is not much as much to do in the small towns. Um, in order to get a similar experience to what you would in LA or California, um, you would probably have to go to the bigger cities like Nashville. Um, but there are a lot more outdoor things to do here. Um, lakes are a big thing. We do hiking, go to nature centers. You're somewhere, somewhat near Nashville. I think about two hours away, there's this place called Land Between the Lakes where we go. We go to their na nature center. Um, we go to the lake. We You can go kayaking. You can go fishing, um, take boats out there. We go and see the bison, which is really fun. It's a lot more outdoor things to do. If you go to like Nashville, you're going to get a... Um, a similar experience to California without the mask and with more friendly people. If music is your thing, then Nashville's your place. Um, there, it's just a re it's a really fun area. Love just walking up and down the strip. Here, where we're 40 minutes from Nashville, we still have like movie theaters and the mall and um, axe throwing, like regular typical things um, that you can do. But we just, if we want to do something like a concert, like a sporting event then we have to drive 40 minutes to Nashville and do those things. If you are in the Smoky Mountain area, Knoxville area, you're gonna ha have the Smoky Mountains the National Park. Um, you're gonna have Dollywood, Pigeon Forge. Those are all really fun things to do, especially with kids. Um, the only thing is, they there is there are no dogs allowed in the Smoky Mountains, which I thought I would mention because we did not know that. Um, and we have a dog. So just, just thought I would throw that out there for anyone who has a dog. But yeah, that pretty much concludes my video. Um, I hope you guys found this information useful. Overall, our overall experience has been positive. Um, I will say that it takes, takes some time to adjust. We've been here um, two years and it has taken almost two years to make really great friends, to get, to feel like, okay, this is our home, you know, to really feel to really feel plugged into the community and really feel like we're at home. So that would be my advice to you guys, wherever you are moving, give it time because it is an adjustment, even if it is better, um, it does, it's different. So it will take, it will take adjusting. It takes time to make friends. You can't compare some, like you can't compare a place where you've lived your entire life to somewhere brand new. Even if it is better, it's going to be different. You're going to miss those people. Like we still miss our family. We still miss our friends. We wish we lived closer to them. That that part of it will always be hard. But this is just a slower way of life. Manageable. And I shared all those things in the first video. But that's just my advice. If you're moving and you feel discouraged that you haven't made friends, you haven't plugged in, just give it some time and be intentional. Like put yourself out there. Try and meet new people. Everyone who we've known who has moved from California to here has had a really great experience. So I hope this encourages you guys. Like always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will answer it for you the best I can. Thank you guys so much for watching this all the way to the end. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next time.